Hello friends and welcome to Rock. I'm so glad you joined us today for Story Art. Today's story comes from the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 to 32. If you have the guidebook, you can turn to page 1080, or you can pick up any Bible in your house, find the book of Luke, and go to chapter 15. So today's story is Jesus teaching crowds of people, and in those crowds were some of the Pharisees who didn't like Jesus too much. And as Jesus was teaching, the Pharisees were telling everybody, this man up there, Jesus, he eats dinner with tax collectors. That's awful. And then they would say, that man up there, Jesus, he broke bread with sinners. That is horrible. Well, Jesus overheard them, and Jesus was going to teach them a lesson. So Jesus told things called parables, which are stories that teach a lesson. And these stories are set in the times of the people so they can understand them. So the first one is the parable of the lost sheep. Now, a lot of the people listening were shepherds. They understood how valuable their sheep were. So Jesus said, imagine you have a hundred sheep in a field and you're counting your sheep and one is missing. What do you do? Well, of course, you go look for it is what they said. And what happens when you find it? Well, they said you rejoice and you lift it high and you praise because you found your sheep. And Jesus said, this joy is in heaven when a sinner repents. Hmm. The next story Jesus told was about the parable of the lost coin. Imagine a woman with 10 silver coins. She's inside her house and she's counting her coins and she realizes ah, one is missing. What does she do? Well, she looks everywhere for this coin. She gets out the broom and she sweeps under the furniture and she looks behind things and up high and down low until finally she finds it. And then what does she do? Yeah, that's right. She rejoices. She found her lost, lost coin. This joy is in heaven when a sinner repents. That's what Jesus said. Now, the third story Jesus shared was the prodigal son. Remember the parable of the prodigal son and his brother? So we have a rich man who has two sons and he has lots of money and the sons are going to inherit all that money one day. Well, the youngest son is bored with life and he begs his father to give him all his money right now. And his father loves him, so his father does. And oh boy, this youngest son, he went out to the city and he spent the money on everything and had fun and bought the best of things and soon there was no money left. And then to top it off, a famine hit, which means there was no food. So this youngest son had nothing to eat. So he started to work at a pig farm. And he realized one day as he was feeding the pigs that the food the pigs had to eat was a lot better than what he had. Imagine that. So the son decided to return back home to his rich father and the brother that remained at home. And as he was walking up the lane, the father saw him from far away. And the father said to everybody, Go and kill the fatted calf and let's have a party. My lost son has returned. And that's exactly what they did. Well, the older brother was a little upset because he didn't spend his inheritance. He stayed with his father and took care of him and took care of the farm and took care of the servants and all the animals and everything. And here, the youngest brother who did all the wrong things was getting a party thrown in his honor. Well, the father said something important. My son that was lost has now been found, and I am going to rejoice. And Jesus was saying that that's what happens in heaven too. This joy is in heaven when a sinner repents. So this all makes me think of a verse from Romans. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. You can find the entire verse at Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. But nothing that you do will separate you from the love of God. God is always going to seek for you, always going to want you to come back, is always going to love you no matter what. So that's an important message to remember because that brings us joy because we are loved no matter what. So today's art project is going to be a representation of that joy. So we're going to have you pick something that brings you joy in your life. And I want you to imagine that feeling as you create your art and we're going to put it in a painting. All right, so go get your supplies and get ready to have some fun.
For today's project, you need quite a few items. So to begin with, you need a bowl of water and you need a palette of paints. It's also best because we're working with paints that you have your surface covered with wax paper or parchment paper or newspaper, just to make sure your table is kept clean. You'll need the largest paintbrush that you have in your house. You'll also need a pile of paper towels cut in half, scissors, a pencil, the black construction paper that is in your packet, and your stencil packet, which looks like this. There's a paper clip that holds a clear plastic sheet, some silhouette figures, and a long piece of paper. So to begin, we're going to set the black paper aside. That is going to be the last thing that we need. And we're going to separate our paper clip and the other papers. What we're creating is a stencil piece of art. And we're focusing on the joy that we feel when we do things. Because we know that when we say we're sorry, God rejoices. All of heaven rejoices. So we're going to try to make a piece of art that represents the joy that we feel inside so we can remember this. So in the silhouettes, you can choose a figure that represents something that brings you joy. It might be playing a sport. It might be dancing. It might be swimming. And if you don't see anything here that you like, you can go to a magazine or online and find a silhouette picture that you can trace. All you need to do is trace it. So when you find your image, you trace it onto your clear plastic paper using a pencil. And I've already done mine for you. And then once you trace it, you can hold it up to a light to see it a little better. You're going to cut it out. But here's the trick. We're going to cut it out so that the inside pops out and the outside stays. We're making a stencil. So start from the edge like I did, but then what you want to do is make sure the rest of the edge stays intact. You don't want it to come apart because we're going to be painting over this stencil. So you're going to take the part that you cut out and put it aside because we no longer need that. And then you have your stencil all put together. Now, if you have a piece of tape, you can tape the part that you use to cut in because that you don't want the paint to be. You only want the paint to be where the opening is, the negative space. So I have chosen these colors to do my stencil painting. You can choose any colors that you like. Just make sure that your last color you use is black. That's very important. So what we're gonna do is just place your stencil on your white page wherever you'd like to. And you're gonna take your paintbrush and you're gonna dab it into whatever color you wanna start with. And then you're gonna gently just dab the color along the stencil. Doesn't have to be super heavy. It can be a lighter kind of paint if you press the stencil around the edges you go, it'll make it more crisp at the edges, which is what we want. And this paint will wash off from your skin if you get it on. It's not good to get it on your clothing though, so maybe be a little careful about your clothes. Okay. And there's our first one. So if you pick up your stencil, there you go, you can see you have that there. Now you're going to want to brush, wash your brush out for the next color. And that's why you have so many paper towels because you wanna get your brush really wet and dab it on your paper towel so that it is ready for your next color. We don't wanna mix colors if we don't have to. And also, you wanna clean this stencil so you're getting ready for your next color. After you have cleaned and dried your stencil, you can go ahead and put your stencil at another place on the page. And you can repeat it, make it a different angle, make it look a little bit different. Um, and you can even overlap your stencils once they dry 
you can put yellow on top of blue and then it'll blend in as a little bit of green. Um, so let's, let's do that now. Let's see if we can do that here. So we'll put this stencil here. We're going to get a little bit of yellow on our brush. And we're going to dab it this way. There we go. And then you'll wash your stencil again and you'll keep going with all of your colors until you have all the colors represented. And then the last color you do is black because that will make your silhouette stand out as the one that is on top. And you can make it off center or wherever you'd like it. Then when you're all finished with this, you can mount it onto your black paper. You'll need to use the scissors to cut your black paper to make a nice frame. And then you'll have your painting of joy to remind you the joy that God feels when we say we're sorry and God always gives his love to us. It was great seeing all of you today. And if you'd like to share your art, we'd love to see it. Just send it my way. So remember what we learned today. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. No matter what we do, no matter how badly we sin, God is always there for us, waiting for us to return to him with open arms. And that's where the rejoicing happens. So go out there and have a great week this week. Let's do a closing prayer. The Lord be with you. Lord above, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your never ending forgiveness. We know that we mess up. It's part of being a human. And we know we can come to you and say we're sorry and that you love us and take us back no matter what. God, we thank you for all of this and help us to show this to others in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, have a great week. We'll see you next time.